Good evening. Welcome to the regular planning commission meeting. Brand name planning commission is August. Yes. yes. <laughs> Please rise and join us at the pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wojciechowski, W. Mr. No, Chairman, go ahead. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the agenda as stated. I'll support. Motion by Mr. Aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, I have reviewed the draft of the meeting minutes for July 8, 2021, and found everything to be in order, and therefore I make a motion to approve unless some of the commissioners have a comment. I'll support that. Motion by Mr. Van Bruce to support by Mr. Bush to approve the regular planning commission meeting minutes for July 8, 2021. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Next item on our agenda is an opportunity for public comment. That's the reason why many of you are here today. Just wanted to make it clear that uh, I'm guessing most of you are here for uh, golf, what I call the golf course property, the seven million unit development that's um, in this road. Uh, that is not on today's agenda. The reason is we did not receive the information from the applicant that we requested. So, Next earliest opportunity that we would hear that would be the first Thursday in September. It all depends on when they get the information to us. So when we just put together typically about a week or so in advance of the meeting. Um, so in that case, the applicant has to have the land at least 15 days in advance. <coughs> Repeat what Joe said. So there's a there's <coughs> the notice will be sent 15 days in advance. I think it's like that. But the property has to have their application sent in advance. So that gives me right now to September to have the contract in the place. Just based on the time. So we're already in August, so we're talking October. So notice will be sent out. Over at the earliest. Okay. Yeah. Are you saying that the public property is not two minutes or is that correct? That yeah. is correct. So we're going to do that before the meeting. That's going to be done. What do you make of the building? A number of things. We have subtraction studies. Uh, the rate of change is likely to be the same. Well, Well, I'm Jill Bain, planning consultant um, for the township. So um, when we have land use uh, cases like this, projects that come through, we look to see whether they are permitted in the ordinance. And currently, the properties are zoned single-family residential. Um, when we are presented with a rezoning application, we have a number of things that we look at, a number of factors. Um, one of those is whether it is compatible with the community's future land use map. 
Um, as you know, over the last um, several months, the township's been relooking at the future land use map um, directed by the township board um, to do that. And there's specific areas, several areas in the township um, in which the land use designations have been modified from when the planning commission was looking at it at the end of last year. As part of that process, the master plan is currently out for its review period. There's a 42-day review period from our last meeting that we had um, in July. So the current land use map doesn't necessarily, um, it, sh it shows those areas as being residential, single family residential. The proposed future land use map would show that area designated as multiple family residential. Either way, a rezoning is required because the current zoning designation is single family residential. Part of that rezoning application process includes a traffic study. It includes um, some substantial information from the property owner um, that would help the township board and the planning commission assess the project with respect to the criteria that are spelled out in the zoning ordinance. And those are in, uh, I believe, chapter seven, and I don't have the citation number handy, but I will get that in a second. Um, and that way we can talk about what the criteria are by which the Planning Commission would make a recommendation to the Township Board and then the Township Board makes the final action on whether the rezoning is, takes place or not. So that's the rezoning portion um, and then their site plan review, which is a separate um, uh, process and that follows the rezoning application. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's do this all in. Let's do this all in comment. Yeah, this is going to get out of hand. Yeah. Normally, what we do is everyone would go out to read the pictures and make a plan, whatever the plan is. Um, we don't want this to be a plan that takes a couple hours. Or wait till public comments over tonight. And if there's some general questions that everybody seems to be asking, answer those all at one time after public comment. Yeah, I, I had none of my information from last week. No, we assume. Some of this information can't. Yeah. We, we, it's we do, on the website. Ma'am, we, we, hang on. I got a comment. Okay. May I speak real quick today before we go to public comment? Just this is. Let's start. <clears throat>
Just as a point of order, I was at a meeting of the zoning board a couple weeks ago with my wife. I think it's green investments, and they were asking for a variance. Excuse me, please talk to the commission. Okay. There, there, was, there was a variance request. Name and address first. Okay. Required. I'll read my statement. Good evening. I'm Tom Reynolds here with my wife, Pat. 5260 McCandlish Road, directly across from the former clubhouse of Genesee Hills Golf Course, where we have lived for 36 years. Pat and I read your impressive and lengthy master plan for Grand Wing Township, which says the property in discussion this evening is zoned low density, single family residential on the 2021 future land use map on page 96 of the master plan, which is this. Four families purchased property on the former golf course and have built beautiful, costly homes. One of those families includes Jay Hoffman, who served the Grand Blanc community for 15 years on this planning commission and was the first to build his beautiful home on one of those parcels. In speaking with Jay and other families on McCandlish Road and in the immediate area, they have all opposed, are all opposed to the idea of multifamily development on this McCandlish Road site. The proposed 79 units would mean hundreds of additional residents with hundreds of vehicles on just seven acres with an 18 foot variance from the road to the buildings. This would be inconsistent with the rest of the neighborhood and would create an unreasonable amount of traffic on an already very busy McCandlish Road. The new Kroger gas station at the corner of McCandlish and South Saginaw will contribute to even more traffic congestion. We humbly ask that you reject this proposal for rezoning to multifamily residential and keep single family residential in this important area of Grand Blanc Township. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the, in the second row on the left side of my to the right? Would like to address the planning commission? Okay, let's go back a row to the third row. I'm Lorene Wilson. Uh, I have lived in off McCandlish Road for almost, <clears throat> excuse me, 56 years. When we moved out there, I mean, Devonshire, we were the only subdivision between that two mile stretch from Saginaw to Vassar Road. Would it was a dirt road. Pardon? Would you please state your address? Oh, 8331 Manchester Drive is my official address right now. Thank you. And uh, when we moved there, it was a dirt road, we, the mud days. We saw the paved road, McCandlish to Vassar, Vassar to Perry Road. The traffic became so heavy that sometimes in the last few years, we've had to wait for seven, eight, nine cars to make a right-hand turn on the McCandlish. And then you get up to Saginaw Street and you might have 10 or 12 cars waiting to turn on that light. I don't know what the people who make a left-hand turn on the McCandlish Road would do because we had to wait that much with a right-hand turn. So I'm very, very concerned about having more traffic trying to get on off McCandlish Road uh, um, from that subdivision and making a turn up to that traffic light. Because it's, and then we, more development coming in on Leech Lane. They're going to planning a vineyard or started a vineyard. You're going to have more traffic trying to come off Leech Lane onto Saginaw Street. So it, to me, it just seems like absolute unnecessary because we have it's already zoned for. And as the previous speaker said, it's already zoned for single family. And we built there as a single, single family. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson, for your comments. Anyone else in that third row? Sure. We skip by you, I guess. 
John Ziska, 5415 McCandlish Road, Grand Blanc. I'm one of the new houses that w was built about a year and a half ago on that property. Um, last meeting that we had that that gentleman was at, we got to talking to the two builders that are proposing to build these. And I mentioned to him what line of work I'm in, and then he tried to tried to get me involved. And I said, he said, we build these things. It's a good look. And I think somebody on the board last week or July 8th or whatever mentioned, oh, it's a beautiful facility. Oh. But I told him, I said, listen, he says they build them in Royal Oak, all these places. I said, but buildings like this, unique looking, it's not bad looking, but they're built for downtown areas where you come out, you walk around downtown, you go to Little Joe's, you go to Aubrey's, go wherever you want to go. This kind of a development does not belong on a residential street. And um, it's tough because the guys, or let's say the group of doctors that bought them originally was talked into buying that clubhouse for a facility to turn into a banquet hall. And there's a beautiful orchard behind or a vineyard, take pictures of the bride and groom. So they made a bad investment. We all know that. He's trying to recoup his money. He tried to sell it, can't sell it. So let's just shove some 79 families into a low income housing on a road that he's trying to recoup the money. And that's where I said, we gotta put a stop to this. Try to sell the property, whatever he's gotta do, and put this, this development, whatever he wants, downtown. This is a downtown look. Go to Royal Oak, go to Birmingham, go wherever you wanna go that these things, these guys think that belongs, Tim and Tom, the builders, put it downtown, Graham Blake. It would look great. Not on a residential street. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ziska. Right. Anyone else in the third row? This isn't a Tiger game, by the way. We're not here to cheer when somebody scores, so. All right. Anyone else? On the, anyone, I guess anyone else on the left side that would like to address the Planning Commission? I'm sorry, I, I'm doing by sides. Oh, okay. My left and my right. Go ahead. Hi, everybody. My name is Andrea Rote. I live at 8345 Oxford Lane. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you for all of you who do a hard job here looking out for our community. But I'm here tonight to tell you that I am opposed to changing the status of zoning of single family dwellings to a multi family dwelling for the three parcels on the Canlish Road. This development would directly negatively affect me. I live further down the road from where this has been proposed. I have lived in this community since 2001. At the time I moved in, this parcel of land was part of a golf course in the community. Due to changes in the economy, possibly poor business management, the long time, once vibrant golf course failed. As sad as I was to see the golf course go, I was not opposed to having beautiful single family homes developed there. These maintained the sense of community that I moved into. This pending request before the board to change the status of the property from single family dwellings to have an apartment complex on that road housing 77 units will ruin our area. I do not want the enormous traffic dumping onto McCandlish Road. If it remained single family parcels, it would add maybe six to 10 vehicles. If you allow a 77 unit complex, that road will immediately have to handle at least 77 to 144 more vehicles. If this is successful, what would be to stop them from buying up the rest of the golf course and turning that into a mega apartment complex? This is a small two lane rural road. This high-density housing will create enormous traffic congestion, parking problems, and will directly affect the neighborhood stability. I do not want to see my property values fall, as always happens when large multifamily complexes move into single-family areas. Everyone who goes to buy a home knows they do not want to live next to a large apartment complex directly next door to them. As a result, 
If you allow this, you will literally ruin all the communities further down McCandlish Road. It will negatively affect the quality of my area and reduce my sense of safety for our community. I also do not want to see the huge influx of students that this will bring to our schools. Right now, our schools are very crowded. We, our scores have been dropping in math, science, and reading. And if we bring in all these additional students, I think it will increase the load on our teachers and continue to make it harder for our teachers to provide quality education for our children. In conclusion, please do not let them make this vote, the zoning change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Rowe, for your comments. I'm sorry. Thank you. No. Well, uh, we're going to run through everybody else first, see if we have time, sir. Anyone else on the left here? Hi, my name is Marjorie Gerber. I live at 6162 McCandlish Road, just down the road from the proposed development. I guess I am here just to voice my um, concern about having a multifamily unit on our street. I th the reasons I see are safety. Um, right now, when I walk or I bike on that street, as many as other people do, and it is there is very little shoulder. Um, the traffic that would increase with a multifamily home will directly impact the safety of those joggers, walkers, and the community that um, uh, we are creating in our um, McCandlish area. Um, I hope the board will um, not grant this variance. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gerber. Anyone else? No, I... I'll go on record and just want my name and say that I don't want it. <laughs> that's fine. That's perfect. Yeah. No, that's fine. Thank you, Ms. Dodds. Uh, to officially get on the record, the microphone is there because it is recorded, but we, are, we have a record that you're against it. <clears throat> Sir, yes. Yeah, if we can get you to come up to the microphone, it's probably better. That way it, it goes on record, it's recorded. I had someone so oh, my name is uh, Charles Vieira. I live at 5348 McCandish Road. And um, and probably at least a couple hours a day, it's hard for anyone to drive out of my driveway. And it's also extremely dangerous for anybody to pull out, you know, without come, going back in and turn around. I have them always go back into my driveway if they leave and turn around. But that place is not safe. Coming down that hill, I looked at it from over the hill to you hit somebody in my driveway. It might be 15, 14 seconds, you know, at 45 miles an hour. And at one time, before they did that, that was only 35 miles in the first portion of McCandish. And now they turned it into 45 coming off of uh, Saginaw Street. And if they go fast enough, they can be up to 45 miles an hour in front of my house. That it's hard to get out of. It's hard to get out of. It's, uh, and other neighbors have thought about it, but. I am the mostly concerned about my young family, my young grandchildren, they come over, they have to manipulate that exit to get back on McCandish, and it's hazardous to them. Okay? That's what, that's what I feel about that. You know, and I see, and I, I mentioned this before a couple of times, and it's always been 
that's the uh, Grand Blank City, Grand Blank Township's business. But this is Genesee. This is Genesee. The candies belongs to Genesee. This is Grand Blank Township. Well, hmm? the road, you're talking about the road itself? Yeah. The County Road Commission. Hmm? County Road Commission has, yeah. juris has jurisdiction, yeah. Thompson Road is it's, Genesee County Road Commission has jurisdiction over the roads. The township does not. I don't know if that explains it or well, not. Well, that's good. You guys got all the. You guys can bring everybody. Good. You got it down, Pat. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, sir. And we're, come on, let's. We're not at a sporting event, people. Anyone else on my left that wants to speak? All right. Hi, I'm Cindy Wygoski. I don't live on McCandlish. I live off of McCandlish at 5044 Candlewood Drive. Um, we live in a single family, old residential um, subdivision. Um, we have nowhere to walk other than in our subdivision. It's all big roads that if the kids want to ride their bike to school, if they want to go downtown, if anybody wants to go for a walk, you're going on a main road. If you're going to put a big um, complex there and bring all this influx of traffic, um, that's just going to make it more dangerous and more um, uh, whatever, make it so that, it, that people are not going to want to walk that way. They're going to have more issues. Um, that development, how far off of the road is the easement that they have, that they can bring that, what did they say, 18? 18 feet? Okay, so no, I haven't seen a plan. So if it's off of the road 18 feet um, for the, the building, um, then you approve it, and then you have that two-lane road out in the front of it, and you have all this traffic. Well, to alleviate traffic, you're going to widen the road. Are you going to widen it on the 18 feet where that new residential complex is? No, you're going to go to the other side where those single-family homes are on the opposite side of McCandlish. It doesn't seem like that's a reasonable option for those folks that have lived there. So that's my comments, Ms. Wojdowski. Mm. Thanks, ma'am. I was still going back down all across the back here. Hi, my name is Pam Turk. I live at 5304 McCandlish Road. I want to thank you for allowing us to speak. And I want to also reiterate a few things that have already been said about the significant traffic that is on McCandless Road. I moved to my condo. I'm, I'm one of the um, persons that live in the four unit condo directly across from where this building will be. So it is very concerning. And again, it's extremely busy on McCandlish Road. Um, anyone that visits me has to go out forward. You know, they, they cannot back out. They have to go out frontwards, or it's very dangerous. Um, to even check my mailbox, I have to be very cautious. There's rarely a time I can make it to it without a car coming by, and I try to I try to beat the cars if I can. Um, earlier this year, my garbage can um, blew across the street like happens with the windiness um, and I by the time I could get it <laughs> I couldn't even cross the street because I get home from work and it was too busy so it, it was too damaged anyways but just a simple thing of crossing the street to obtain my garbage can was impossible um, in my particular condo there are two driveways that you can enter and exit from if you the the, the one that's I'm a, if you face the street, I'm on the left side, the right side driveway. It is extremely dangerous because there's a blind spot. I have an elderly woman that lives next to me, and it's. she said a couple times she's just made it because of the um, hill in the road, you know, way down the road. So, again, add traffic to this. We have more challenges. And, um, again, there's noise. There's many features that I'm very concerned about. But I guess the biggest thing I ask every single person who's involved in this decision, please take time to drive on McCandlish, stop at the property, stop at the condo, sit in the driveway, kind of process in your mind, okay, how would I feel if I lived here, if I lived in this home? 
And I looked out and I saw that increased traffic, if there, you know, again, visually, I'm very fortunate to look at greenery now. That will not be there anymore directly across the street from my condo I just bought three years ago. So again, please put yourselves in the shoes of all of us when you make this decision. Thank you so much for your time. Your comments, appreciate it. Continue, anybody else on the left side? You know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna continue across the back. Anybody in the back aisle? Then we'll start moving forward. Anyone in the, whatever it is, about the fourth row? Would like to address the Planning Commission? Third row? <laughs> getting closer. <clears throat> Hello, thank you for letting us um, speak our concerns. Um, like many of the people, okay, Barbara Baumgartner, 5101 Briar Ridge Court. I've lived there for um, 30 years. And um, the Canvas Road has gotten harder and harder to get out on. Um, that is one of the exits from our neighborhood off from Apple Way. And um, one other point is in the winter, um, you can sit there forever when the roads are bad with the traffic too. So that's another consideration I'd like taken. And a question for the board, according to the July 8th meeting, the, um, the um, developer or his representative was supposed to meet with the zoning commission um, after that meeting about a variance. There's supposed to be a 50% setback variance between the buildings that he's proposing uh, building. Does anyone know if that meeting took place yet and if there's any minutes from it? Normally we don't answer questions, but I'm gonna address this one. The meeting, the variance board meeting did take place and they did not get approval of the variance that they requested. They showed, or I think they have various options that they're looking at. The one that they wanted the most, they needed uh, a variance for and that was not granted from my understanding. Okay, thank you. And then um, one other thing regarding the property and the concern that the person who owns it can't sell it. Um, I would like to bring attention to the one on Warwick Hills that was for sale forever and ever that's right off from Saginaw Road. They recently built a ginormous home there that was recently sold. So I really feel that if he, the owner feels that he has no other choice than to uh, resort to multiple zoning um, to sell that property, he needs to look no further than the property in Warwick Hills, which is right off Saginaw Road, which would actually be a less desirable property than the one on McCandless Road for a single family home. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Baumgartner. <laughs> All right, so we were in row three. Anybody else in row three? Row two? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Jay Kamaredi, and uh, we live on 8426 Warwick Groves Court, and that's uh, a subdivision of McCandlish, and uh, I share the same concerns that all the folks have sh uh, previously have shared with you, so I'm not going to repeat myself on that, but I'd like to go on record saying that I'm opposed to, uh, to this uh, development. I guess the, the, I have a question regarding the process for informing residents of Grand Blanc Township or those concerned residents around the, uh, about the upcoming meeting. How do we get to know when these meetings happen? Because we just heard through the great great point through emails and uh, showed up here and then we were told that the meeting is canceled and I had so many things planned this evening so I know this is not your busy official people. Official notification through the mail, correct? 300 feet. So it's only 300. <laughs> whoa, whoa, come on, let's, guys. So, uh, so I guess that's the concern I have is is if it's only 300 feet, but me in the newspaper. In fact, I got my Grand Blank view today, and there's all kinds of Mr. Anderson. 
Chance. Sorry, it, 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 so it, it was in the grand blank view today. So if you didn't get a chance. No, not, not this particular one, but mm -hmm. other elements. It's always posted in the newspaper. Okay, but then if, I guess the question is. In the newspaper and any residents within 300 feet of the property will get noticed. And I'm sure based on the good communication skills that I've seen here today, everyone will find out. So. Well, I, I'm sure they'll find out, but we don't want to come here and you know, find out that the meeting's been postponed. I guess that's my thing, because it's, like we I never, said. We hmm? never provided notice that the meeting was mm -hmm. tonight. It was kind of started on social media. So. Oh, I see. So it wasn't an official. All right. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Robert Stratman. I'm at 5308 Um I agree with everything that everyone said about the traffic patterns. It's horrendous. One thing no one's talked about is the increase in crime when you put a multifamily unit near you. Our police station is quite far. I mean, our police station's right here. We're at the other end of this township. I don't remember the last time I saw a township police officer down there. So is there a study to show how many more officers are going to be required? To, how you, to, to protect us when you have a, which I would assume, a low-income multifamily housing unit that goes in there. So besides a traffic study, I think there needs to be a crime study. <laughs> you know, not, not paid for by the residents, but paid for by, by the developer who wants to put this in. How is he going to protect us? Is he going to provide the security? Is he going to stop that, the, even the headlights, you know, the, or the light shed? off of a multi-family unit. Um, anyone who lives near a taller building, the lights are gonna come over any kind of berm that gets put in. Um, right now, there are no cars that exit off of McCandlish. As soon as this development gets uh, put in, the cars will exit, the headlights will shine onto all of the homes across the street. That's not there right now. And uh, it's just something you have to think about. But the most important thing was the crime. I think it needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else on my right that would like to address the Planning Commission? Hi, I'm Gary Hankinson. I'm at 5407 Sutton Court. My wife and I, Suzanne Hankinson, uh, would like to say a few words. First of all, I agree with everything that's been said so far. I'm very concerned about all the same concerns. I have to say um, this is about change. And uh, if you have been around McCandlish Road, you know that McCandlish Road has changed. We've been here for over 30 years in the house in Village Green. I have to say, McCandlish Road is one of my favorite roads in Grand Blanc Township. Even with the changes over the last 30 years where it was just one big field and it was just one heck of a fun time to uh, run with the dogs and do all kinds of things with their kids in the fields play golf, all that kind of thing. Uh, I still love McCandlish Road. I love running on McCandlish Road. Occasionally I ride my bike on McCandlish Road and take my life into my own hands by doing that. But it is still a great road. But this proposal will turn it into the worst road in Grand Blanc Township because of all the things that have been said already. I like change. I like seeing things develop. I like the culture of Grand Blanc Township, and I want to stay here, and I want to love it, and I want to continue to love McCandlish Road. But if you add this particular structure, it's going to do what has just been said, and it's going to change the culture of our community. And I don't want to change the culture. I want to change, but I don't want to change the culture of our community in this particular area. I think it's got a lot of really good history and a lot of really good things going for it right now. Changing it would make it something very undesirable. So thank you. Thank you for your comments, sir. Anyone else? This will be quick. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. No problem on change. I lived across the street before for 17 years in high growth. Excuse me, would you please repeat your name again? Oh, I'm sorry. John Ziska, 5415 McCandlish Road. And um, I know what it, it, it changes. It, it affects people differently. For the first five years when I moved in the back of high grove, my neighbors that backed up to me in Warwick wouldn't talk. It's like they still expected the deer and the antelope to be playing in the backyard. You know, so 
I understand that. When I talked to the builders, the proposed builders of this site, okay, I said, why don't they just do it tastefully? Put it three, four, if you want to keep them single family, like across, or single story, like across the street, make them beautiful. You know, keep the value. This guy is trying to shove these units down to make as much as possible. And I think what the builders forgot to do, or they slipped, was the fact that these are going to be rental units. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Okay? These are going to be rental units that the these doctors, the two doctors. We haven't seen that. Okay, you eventually will. Yeah. Now, if this thing actually happened today. We may not. Who knows? Right. If this thing happened today that it didn't get canceled, hopefully you guys are more prepared that you guys are going to get more information on this. But these doctors, because of a bad investment, are trying to shove this stuff down. I wish put those buildings right next to where they live. Go ahead. Do it. It's not going to happen. We know that. Thank you. But, okay. All right. We're going to close. Was there someone else? You want to speak? I should. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Uh, my name is Susan Richards. I live at 8296 on Manchester. Uh, my husband and I bought our house uh, a few years ago, and I chose that side of town because of the feel of the area. It has a very country feel. Um, I could have easily chose from numerous houses in the city. I didn't want to live in the city. I didn't want to live on top of each other. Our sub is pretty well spread out. It's an older subdivision. I love it. Um, the thing about traffic, yes, everybody here mentioned the traffic. It is valid. <laughs> the traffic is traffic. Um, everything changes. Everything grows in life. Um, but a multi-unit complex does not fit in our area. It really, truly doesn't. And one of the concerns I have is that property there, once that goes, what happens to the property that's on Saginaw? Because it's f listed for sale. I don't know about the zoning or anything like that. But does then that down the road get turned into an additional complex or strip mall or something along that lines? And then say 10 years from now, long term, because I still got a lot of life to live and I don't plan on moving anytime soon. So what happens in 10 years when this, whoever the management company is, doesn't uh, keep up like per se how the whoever owns the Walmart, wherever that is in the water's dry and it's nasty and there's garbage all over. Is that what this complex is going to look like once the uh, paint starts to fade? That, that's my, that's the, change is going to happen. Houses will go, people will come and go, but long term, is that really what I want to live next to? No, because if I did, I would have stayed in my old house. Thanks. Your comments. Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. Sir, I'll, I'll, uh, I listen to everybody speaking. About, I'm, I'm sorry, my name is Ahmad Naguib. I live on uh, 5499 Territory Road in, in uh, the uh, Village Green subdivision, which is close to the intersection. I will uh, speak about a different, completely different point, which is the value of the homes around the area. By me owning, me and my wife, owning a 36 unit apartment building in the city of Flint for the past uh, 20 some years. And sadly, I used to listen to my neighbors of the apartment building that I owned, which is was I didn't build, but it was a fact already existing. So I used to listen to the neighbors that have been living there, they lived there for, for 40, 50 years. And they are um, reminiscing about the days before the apartment building was built and how that affected their everyday life and how that affected the value of their homes. Because as an owner of an apartment building, I know what, it, what happens in the apartment building. Uh, atmosphere, a lot of problems, no matter how you control it, no matter how you try to do your best to uh, keep everything under control, still things get under control in terms of uh, different tenants and stuff like that, but as well as the property, the property values. Everybody spoke about traffic, which is a great point, especially the adjacent uh, lots or the adjacent houses close to the vicinity of the apartment uh, assumed, you know, to, to be built the values will drastically go down, or at least to a point will go down. I just wanted to bring that to your attention, and thank you very much for your... For your thank comments, you. Sir. We're going to close the public comment section, unless there's anyone else that I missed. All right, we'll close that. We're going to take about a five-minute break. If you'd like to 
leave, you're welcome to do so. If you want to stay, you can stay as well. But we don't have anything regarding this item on tonight's agenda. <laughs> Give you an opportunity to leave if you'd like. Yeah. Can we call the Planning Commission meeting back to order. Three, four, five, six. We're missing. There, there Mr. is. Bush. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> Next item on this evening's agenda is correspondence. Uh, I think the only thing that I have seen is planning and zoning news, in addition to many uh, emails about the previous project that was discussed. Um, any other correspondence? Next item would be old business. I don't think we have any old business. New business, site plan review, King Steel Railroad Spur. Do we have anyone that's making a presentation? Uh, I can't get the presentation to, we can't get it to load up, unfortunately. Can't get the, get connect to the projectors? We've been, that's what we've been, uh, yeah, so we're just gonna, it's a, it's all, it's just a two page letter, I think we'll, we can. We, we tried that. It wasn't the applicant here. Where's the applicant? I think the packet looks pretty self-explanatory to me. So I'm not going to. Yeah. So. Yeah. So why, we, we, full disclosure here. Full transparency. So, I presume you're the applicant. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're making sure you're here. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll try right left. <laughs> Here's my interview. Well, come on up to the front. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, as yeah, yeah, I'd love to take seats in the front and then come on up. If there's questions, you can love step to the someone to like, kind of just give us a little general review of what you want to do, and then we'll get into the details of. She says, I guess that's me. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is JC Hogan. I work for Rhodes and Johnson Construction um, at 285 North Alloy in Fenton, Michigan. I am here kind of representing Kevin Johnson and then King Steel with Jimmy Cummings Jr. So in regards to site plan review of extension of the railroad um, on this property. Is that, is that enough? Fine, Pretty simple. <laughs> what are you looking for the, uh, the railroad spur to, to do? What's the reason behind adding this? For unloading purposes. Business has mm -hmm. a yep. immediate need for that. Yeah, yep. Okay. You were going to go through? Okay. Yeah, I got a, a couple of uh, highlights. So as they uh, mentioned, they're looking to... Um, construct railroad trackage to serve their facility, King Steel, um, railroad transfer and storage tracks, railroad rights of way and freight terminals are permitted uses in the I-1 district, which in which the site is located. Um, so there was a couple of notes. Um, the surrounding uses are all, um, surrounding zoning is all industrial. There is a single family home um, adjacent to the site, but it's it's owned by the applicants and it's on the same property. Um, looking at um, the the site plan and met all the dimensional requirements, we just had one note. Um, really, it was about the parking area, the parking lot um, in the front of the building. Um, per the ordinance, uh, two spaces per 1,000 square feet of gross floor area or 1.2 spaces per employee at peak shift, whichever is greater is what's required. So if we go by the um, 76,000 square feet, that's over 153 parking spaces that this building would require. So um, we've uh, actually added a note based on their employees at peak shift, they would require about 23 is what they've estimated as their need. So that's um, summarized in number six there on the bottom of the first page. Um, if we flip that over to um, 6A on the top of the second page, um, there is a parking lot deferment available to the applicant, which can be worked out between the attorney and the applicant, which would essentially allow them to propose a parking number, um, which they have, and that, that can be um, approved on the site plan. 
So we've noted if the applicant wishes to pursue this approach, a written legal agreement, which has been approved by the township attorney to construct the deferred parking shall be provided by the applicant. So um, that's number six. Number seven, um, they were did not show their uh, minimum parking lot trees um, and parking lot landscaping. They're required to have four trees, three within landscaped islands. Um, so we would just ask that that be added to the final site plan. And those are the only two um, elements that we that we had comments on. They've uh, provided their loading and loading and unloading spaces. They provided the easement language, and they've indicated no exterior lighting will be added to the site. So, is this railroad spur being added in order to? I'm presuming benefit your business, right? Will it increase your business? Yeah, go ahead. Excuse me. Would you please step to the podium yeah. and state your name? That way it's on the recorded record, just, just for Hi, I'm Doug King, uh, CFO of, uh, of King Steel Corporation on Holly Road. Uh, the question was the purpose of the rail spur. The rail spur, will uh, what it'll do, it'll add the value to our business to allow us to add further processing plants. Uh, we have a big customer right across the street, a Shinsho Industries, and they currently are bringing in 4,000 ton a month of steel by truck from Philadelphia, and they're wanting to do it by rail because the trucking industry is, is tough. They can't get enough trucks. So we saw this as an opportunity to get a letter of commitment from them, which we had, uh, to unload and transload their material, and then we could add further manufacturing to we've got a total of 30 acres that we could add more plants right in there that would benefit from rail delivery. So for your current business, will you be hiring additional people for this business? Well, for the current expansion right now on the railroad, we would bring three more people in, all right, for right now. But then let's say that goes to a processing plant where we now bring in material and process it, that could add more people, but that's not that's in the long term. So what's your, I didn't catch it if, if you covered that, the, the maximum number of employees per shift? Right now, the maximum number, I forget what number we had. You provided us then said it was 18 employees. 18? It would yeah. be 18. It's right, currently right. from 12 to 15, so adding three would bring it to 18. And we've got a bank of eight saws where one man will run two saws. We've got another uh, piece of equipment that does saws bars. We're mainly in steel bar processing. So we got that, plus we got our shipping and receiving, and then we've got our, uh, we got our office personnel. We've got one office personnel there. How much overlap? Or do you run more than one shift? We were running three shifts, then it went down to two, and the chip shortage got us now, so now we're down to one. So we're trying to get that built back up again. Assuming that goes back, how much of an overlap is there in shifts? Uh, separate? I mean, well, they work, they would work three eight hour shifts, so there would be two overlaps on each end of each eight hour shift. I'm just trying to figure out from a number of parking spaces what would be the maximum peak. You have people that are still on first shift when second shift shows up. No, they would have left. They would, they would have been gone like five minutes. They get the five minute area, so they would have been gone before the next shift theoretically shows up. Now, occasionally you have some people who work overtime, this sort of thing, so that would take take that. So, but basically, they're like they're like going before they get there. So, from a number of parking spaces you currently have, what did we show? Total parking spaces. Uh, the total parking spaces right now you have twenty three. Okay, so that's. We got a little bit more than that, didn't we? Did we add? 23 existing and 43 proposed, I think. I guess it's uh, somewhere between 23 and 38. It's uh, there. It's just based on the way it's striped, I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. So exactly. So you don't see, you don't foresee a problem with. No. That. If we have, just by adding a couple of people right now, if we haven't had a problem, we're not going to have one. 
Okay. Mr. Bush. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple questions. Uh, one for you. Has they been to site plan review? No. Uh, and is this required? Well, this is site plan review tonight. Okay, so you're not having? No. Okay. Um, the second thing is the parking. Um, I know it says it needs parking, but it's an existing facility that was approved with X amount of parking how long ago? I mean, how long have you been in operation? Quite, quite a while. Yeah. I mean, you've been in our community for a long time. It used to be the old Hall Steel building. Right, right. So, so my question is then, if the railroad spur doesn't generate parking, they're not building any additional building, why are we asking for additional parking? And that doesn't make any sense to me. Assuming it's going to make them more efficient, right? Yeah, well, well and I, I mean, if they do a building addition, I can see additional parking, but I mean, they've been functioning for 30 years with what they got, and, and we're telling them they need more parking? It is a change, so. So, the, the, yeah, when the, the site plan comes in, we review it against the ordinance. There was that they were actually in in 2017 and had a, um, an approval at that point. Right. Um, and that's where we got the 38 spaces for. So this is sort of uh, just making sure that they're um, keeping all the written legal agreements. Oop. So the um, the de parking lot deferment actually in that agreement, um, it would say if there was ever a parking issue where there were people parking on the grass or neighbors had an issue, they would then be legally required to build no, additional parking. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that makes sense. But yeah, I, what I don't get is it's already a pre-existing building approved with parking, and they're not changing it. That's my only question. I think it's just required that we take note of it. Say that that's, that's what your ordinance, what the ordinance right. requires, yeah. Yeah, but it would have been required in 2017. And, and that's not that there. Was granted them. Right. Okay. So the deferment's the answer, then, is what you're saying. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Well, and it also indicates that if the planning commission finds that the required parking is excessive, then we can approve a smaller parking area, right? I can just speak to that. I I'm familiar with there, and I did drive by today. I went home from work. Plenty of open spots. <laughs> There's not an issue. Right. <laughs> Anyone else? Mr. Yancho? Yes, I'm not quite sure. Um, I got it correct. Please correct me. It's only going to be for freight in, not freight out. Yeah, for right now, it'll come in on rail cars and ship out on trucks. Uh, so, yeah, basically freight in right now. Freight in and trucks in for right now. There's no reason it can't be freight out, though. Oh, no, no, none whatsoever. And um, is it exclusively for King Steel? Or I mean, there's a lot of heavy industry in the area. I know. Um, that can benefit. You know, <laughs> it, it can, it can yeah, benefit you're getting our, to the point. It can benefit our roads. It can benefit Grand Blanc By Township. keeping trucks off our roads. Absolutely. It's the one thing that's missing. I mean, where we're located in that Baldwin, North Holly Road area, we've got a good electrical grid. We've got good highway interstate access. The DDA is doing a lot to improve the roads to get trucks in and out. The one thing we don't have is some place for a rail siding to come in. And when Lake State Railroad came in and did the short line railroad and bought it from CSX or leased it from CSX, that opened up the ball game is where we now, they'll cooperate and then work with a small operation like ourselves, like loading and unloading rail cars. So this will be very convenient for you. Absolutely. Um, it will also be, I think, an attraction to other businesses on the vacancy. In the, in the well, I I've discussed with a few people in the township that, and they, and they were not aware that there is an existing spur at the old Wicks lumber yard. The, the, the road bed is there, but not ties or tracks. Right. Um, so, but that wouldn't be as convenient as having one in your 
own backyard. Yeah, especially if we wanted to do further processing. We've got just around the corner, around the lake, we've got Acumet, who brings steel in by truck, who we would go with. We've got Shinsho right across the street, right across the railroad track is Shinsho, who brings in steel. So there's a lot of business that could be added by bringing this in and which could attract further processing down the road, so. So uh, without the lights, you know, you're limited to just uh, daytime loading and unloading, right? Right. Do you see where the opportunity might exist that you would want lights there in the future? Well, you never know in my, before I moved up here, I had a uh, steel company did the same thing in Ferndale, Michigan. We had the yard we built, we did pretty much the same thing and we never really needed, night unloading. You got enough light, daylight hours that you can get it done and get it loaded out. Um, that's, that's great. I thank you for answering those questions. While I'm on the floor though, um, for this is possibly for the engineering company, on the page two of the row uh, response, it says, Routing drainage, route drainage to proposed detention retention basin. And I can't find on the plans where there's an additional or a new retention basin. Um, no, well, yes, I didn't print it. So. All the numbers. I just put all Is it, will the there be a new? There's 40 new sheets. I didn't print them all. Those from Rio? Yes. Are there any there has been. changes proposed to detention? I would have to defer to engineering on that. <laughs> okay. I guess the planner. <laughs> and the email that we received this morning from yes. Maria, um, I, I downloaded the, the literature. I did not download the 40 page mm -hmm. site plan review mm -hmm. documentation. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the concerns that were in the row report were taken care of in this report. Although I didn't see the plans themselves, it does say that it, it references every sheet. Yeah, I, th I think any motion w we need to reference the that the row engineering report is addressed. And part of it is normally we get that as part of our our uh, package. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, we got the uh, the row initial letter, but we really didn't get a chance to kind of go through and compare line by line as you came in today, but just to make sure that they're happy that everything's been addressed, is that what we wanted to do? Yes, everything. Oh, and I, I, the other question I've got is in regard to, uh, there's some, uh, in here regarding adding a few trees in the parking lot, do you have any issue with doing that? No. Anyone else in the planning commission? Um, I, I, I believe what we're talking about here is um, the second page of the row and row thing, um, site sheet four of four plan view. Is that what you're referring to? The drainage? The letter from row right there. Yes, the page on page yeah. two. Okay. Uh, I've, I've read it a couple times, and I think the second time I've read it, it kind of makes more sense. It looks like they're providing underground 12-inch diameter slotted drainage tube. Not, nothing open, nothing nothing exposed to existing structure. They're not adding any detention ponds. Yeah, at the north side of the property, that's. Oh. Okay, I see. Yep. Oh, which is existing drain right there, and there's a little tension area kind of just on the east side of that. Okay, okay. So, yeah, there, it's there. It's difficult to see in the map, and I, I missed that the first time. I see it. So, I think that it, for me, anyway, that, that did clear that question up. 
are you going to demo the house on the property you own there? That was the original plan, but then we had somebody that wanted to rent it that worked at the plant next door. So <laughs> <laughs> we worked that one with him. But in the long run, yeah, that, that house would be ready. It, it, you know, if somebody's living there, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. yeah. You walk to work. Well, it's, some, it's security, too. Yeah. Okay. No. Are there any other uh, comments from township departments that uh, we may have got? Nothing. Need to approve this tonight. I'll make the motion that we approve. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Still right. Still right. Okay. What I'm what I'm doing is listing conditions here, um, just to make sure we got everything covered. Um, we would want want the applicant comply with the uh, township engineer requirements, and also township engineer requirements stated in his July 29th letter, and then uh, site plan review. Giffels Webster dated 727. Anything else? Just correspondence that we got to 730. Should be incorporated. Dated August 4th. July. That states should be 630. Just to correct correct your a couple things that they're going to date on that. Plan. I'm sorry. 6.30, not 7.30, the, the date you gave us. You said, you said the 27th, it should be the 30th. July 30th. And which, which letter are you talking about? Making your Planning letter. letter should be dated July 30th. Your comments of what are writing in that chart. This one says 7.27. Okay. That's the plan date. Look at the top, uh, top left. the date on the Ah, okay. Left. There you go. There you go. All right. Plan date. Thank you. So we have uh, township engineer requirements identified as July 29th letter, August 4th response from the applicant. That Giffels Webster um, planning site plan review letter dated July 30th. Anything else we need to do to our motion? All right, Mr. Anderson, I believe you wanted to make it. Okay. Let me know if I'm going to miss something here. I'm going to say we. Make a motion to approve slight pan review number 1082 King Steel Railroad Spur. Pending the applicant follows through on the requirements of the township engineer letter dated July 20th, 2020. Support. You want to add the other dates? To it yes. Official? I want to add the August 4th, 2021 letter. It looks like by the applicant that mm -hmm. states they're going to do some revisions to the plan and that was that was the one we got today i just want to make sure that's in there i'll agree to that and we've got Giffels webster, the requirements in giffles webster which letter which is primarily item six and seven yes okay all right so we had a motion by mr anderson to approve that. the site plan uh, mr bush supports that any other discussion not all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. Roll floor. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Show what the rumor will of social media can do with that. Eight. Oh, man, Nothing that was said tonight was fact. <laughs> I mean, no reports, right? Well, it was interesting when I went out there to close the doors to uh, some comments that I got <laughs> about our attitude. So nice. Well, they smile. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your leadership. I thought we held it together, huh? Oh, my God. oh Dan, Dan stopped me here. I was well, you I was, rather I was than getting us. ready to wind up. <laughs> All right. Congratulations and. Yeah. Bring us some more business to Grambling Township. Ah, great.
Okay, we're going to move on. You're free to leave if you would like, or you're free to stay. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Tell Kevin next time he's got to come himself. Oh, I know. I go and like move from here, and everything's gone. Away. <laughs> Tell him I said hello. Thanks. All right, next item would be committee reports, township board. Sarah Hugo is not here, planning and zoning. Jeremy is not here. I didn't know if there's anything from uh, <laughs> Giffels Webster. Zoning Board of Appeals would normally be Jeremy as well, I guess. Nothing there? I was, I went to that meeting. I was at the meeting. Okay. If you want to report, basically, yeah. it was on the condos. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the recommendation by this body um, was plan two, if you remember, with the four foot offset. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, I tried my best to tell them this is what I, this board wanted, and they said no anyway. So, I mean, that's their flavor. I kind of walked out thinking they stepped on our toes a little bit. Um, I sensed after that, I spoke with Jeremy. Uh, I spoke with the township supervisor just to find out procedurally if that was the proper way to go about things because um, we shouldn't be stepping on each other's toes. So hopefully in the future that doesn't happen. It was a little different order than what we'd normally see. Okay. I, I just thought that was, you know, I, I pleaded my case with them and said, look, the planning commission wants more green space. They, they didn't want to hear it. And then the uh, next item would be site plan review. We haven't seen anything in the last month. So motion for adjournment um, would be enough, unless um, you have something else. Yeah. I'd like to uh, pick everybody's brain to see if there's something that we can do to educate the public. Um, I know it's been... You know, it's, but it's an ongoing problem uh, that people post on public media. It's going to happen again. And I'd like to be able to put together some form of brief response or uh, an outline of how the Planning Commission works or how you know, and, and who has authority, whether it's the township board or whether it's the planning commission. Um, and who, and the, and the fact that we don't go out and solicit <laughs> uh, any type of building or construction or zoning. Anybody have any I, ideas? I, I, I got a, and, go ahead, Mr. Bush. Well, I was just gonna make a comment, and I, and I know a lot of people sitting on this board have been in Grand Blank Township, served Grand Blank Township for a long time, myself included. I've attended many meetings and sat at this table a lot. And for the most part, uh, nobody comes to our meetings. Mm -hmm. We're here alone. We make decisions based on what we feel is best with the applicant. There might be one or two people in the audience. But uh, unfortunately, that's just the, the nature of the beast. And it's not just our board, it's every board. Mm -hmm. And we've all seen it because we've all been here a long time. And so I, 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 I agree with Mr. Yancho. I don't know what the answer is. I, I, for one, was ready to respond to the email. And my wife mm -hmm. yanked my ear and said, <laughs> no, no, no. And I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't. Um, because you're just going to get back and forth in a banter match because there's so much misinformation. And we know what's right. But then if we write what's right, how do they know we're saying what's right? So You're going to accuse us of lying, even if we exactly. tell the truth. So I choose didn't to ignore them and we'll address the issues again. So ignorance is bliss, I guess, right? Well, that was true. They'd all be happy. So. Sorry, I should have said that. Yeah. Withdraw well, that from them. Yeah. They're not going to be happy when the R1 goes it's behind them. Larry, when the R1 goes behind the million dollar house, they're not going to be happy. Um, Mike, they, they're not going to no, be happy. I agree with you. No, there's no one decision that's going to appease everybody, period. No matter what we do on that piece of property, there will not Or with any community, not just any community. But I would agree with. Uh, Mr. Yancho, back a few years ago, the township put together a process on coming to the township and getting contracts and so and how you apply and so forth, which was a kind of a, a, a condensed form. And after that, I, I steered people to that, and I got very favorable comments on how that it made it a lot easier to work with a township. So... So there should be something we can put together. And if nothing else, it's, it's, it's there. 
you know, we have it at, you know, and we can put it out there. It's available. Now, I don't read one woman, or I don't read the Grand Blank News. Well, I'm sorry, but that's part of the process. And if we help explain the process, that may help. I mean, if you're not within the 300 feet, uh, you know, radius, you're not going to be happy. But nonetheless, I think given tonight, so we're not looked all as bad guys and gals, you know, we at least, sh least should make an attempt to try to simplify that. And, excuse me, just to finish, uh, Larry and I talked with this one gal about the variance, you know, and, well, is, this, is that this board, why, right. why, you know, you guys are opposed or opposing each other, what? So there's a lot of misinformation. Information's out there, if the, you know, we say go to the website, but if you go to the website and travel that, it's not that simple for people that aren't highly educated, in my opinion. Even if they're educated, if you're not familiar. Well, I would say not educated in the, yeah. how well, the township operates. Yeah, familiarity, yeah. Familiar. yeah. I, when I left my, my last term on the board, and I, I didn't, I haven't been here in years after I got off the board. But you know what? I've lived in this town my entire life, and I'm on the website twice a week. For the last five, six, seven years, I go Most there residents because are. Because I care about my community. Most so residents. I, I agree 100% with what Vince is saying, but you know what? There's a website. Use it. It's 2021. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we, we're, we're hiding anything. I just wanted to follow up on your remark. I really think we should stress and encourage people to go to the website Absolutely. if they want, you know, information and answers about issue, you know, what's happening in the township, or if they have questions, call the township, you know. Um, maybe even put a Q&A section on the website or something about, you know, with the most frequently um, questions that people have, you know, which the staff would certainly be able to probably give us some input. Yeah. You know, what, what kind, what's the most typical complaints, questions, yeah. comments, and a Q&A kind of thing. I get hit with residents that buy a house and then call me or say, well, how come they're going to put that across the street? Well, it's zoned commercial. Yeah. And these people had no idea. Well, yeah. that's because you didn't bother looking before you bought your house. I mean, I, I don't... I, I, this might sound harsh, but I guess if you're not going to do your due diligence before you spend three hundred thousand dollars, I guess that's your own fault. There's a so, lot. There's a lot that's happened in the last year and a half that people are not happy with, <laughs> and they're looking to, for somebody to be mad at. So hey, you got to take it. <laughs> One well, thing I, I think oh, it's us. Just, yep. <laughs> yeah. If we take a step forward, you know, at least we've done something, yeah. kind of res responding to that. I agree. You know, to, to, to what they said. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I went back out there to close the door, well, how come you canceled the meeting? Uh, we didn't cancel anything. Exactly. There wasn't there wasn't any notice There's given. So in the much first place. I want right to somebody speak was... to that real quick, if I can. There was one particular person that just commented multiple times on a page that I uh, run about this proposed development, urging all the residents to come speak, blah blah blah, talking about this and mentioning tonight's meeting, tonight's date, tonight's time. And while this conversation was going on, I just kind of did a double check. Every single one of that person's comments have been deleted. The, the entire post is gone. Yeah. Like they realized, oops, it's not tonight. Right. But it was the can of worms has already been opened, if you will. So I posted on that on that page that there was not a meeting, that there, it wasn't scheduled. And I t told people how to get the correct information to go to the back page exactly. of the classifieds in the news or or go to the proper Facebook page, or go to the township website. I told them, I gave them the links to exactly. the township website. Exactly. So all they'd have to do yeah. is click on it, and they could see what the agenda was. No, and if they don't think they we don't do that. People don't think we care. I think I watched everybody make a page of notes tonight, guys. Yeah. Everybody. Not not just one of us. Exactly. So I will I mean, take a motion to adjourn at uh, eight thirty one p.m. One one last question, Mr. Chairman, before you make that a motion, depriving me of that. But nonetheless, <laughs> when do we put the sign out when a piece of property is being rezoned or being proposed to be rezoned? Okay. So we have yet to receive that application. Okay, so I mean, that's another. Yeah, so that's another thing for us to say. 
you know, when it's going when there's a proposal to rezone, it's posted. So it's not like it's hidden someplace. It's posted. And yes, people within 300 feet, which they don't like that distance, but nonetheless, where do you draw the line? 500, 1,000, 2,000? It's 300 standard. It's yeah. a standard. Yes. I believe but, that, yeah, that is state law, correct. Yeah, but then I think if we just tell them when it's gonna, when it's gonna be a pr proposed for rezoning, it's posted right there. It's, um, so everybody that, drove, or that will drive up and down McCandless Road, they will see that posting. So I, I come back to due diligence. It's a minimum of 15 days posted, and it can be no more than 30. So there's a nice window there, a minimum and a maximum. You know, guys, that piece of property out front in our zone commercial, wait till that one goes, and somebody's going to buy it and build. Are you With now at clubhouse? <laughs> You're talking about on Saginaw Road there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to go right, right on Saginaw. Yep. Yeah. We'll put a gas station there. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ooh, Chairman, you made a motion. He's already going to What's the time? 8.32 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion, if that's okay with you, yes, sir. to adjourn the meeting at 8.33 p.m. Motion by Mr. Bandersky, support by Mr. Anderson. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We are adjourned, 7-0. Thank you.